Malaria is one of the big killers of children globally, particularly in Africa. And, it, and it's been a disease that you know, really has been with us since the dawn of humanity in some form or another. Over thousands of years, we've had the scourge of malaria, you know, predominantly killing young children. And um, we haven't had a vaccine available to help in the fight against malaria. And this is, a, this is really a, a journey in, in reaching this point. It's a journey that's taken 30 to 40 years. So it is a really significant moment. So you've worked in different regions around the world. Where is this vaccine going to be the most effective? Well, most of the deaths, especially young, among young children, occur in sub-Saharan Africa. So, so the majority of the cases are in African countries. And so that's where the benefit of the vaccine will be greatest. In our region, there's a very high burden of malaria still in countries, PNG and some other countries in our region, Papua New Guinea. Um, so it may be a benefit there, but there's some complexities. Um, and, uh, you know, so really that's, that's initially WHO is saying, World Health Organization is saying, recommending rolling out the vaccine in, in African countries where children are at high risk of malaria. There are different variants of malaria. Um, so which one is this going to be effective or is it going to be effective across all? Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's a really important point, especially for us in this part of the world. So there are two main forms. One we call falciparum malaria, and that's what this vaccine targets. This is, this is what the vaccine protects against. It's the, it's the main cause of malaria globally, and it's the main cause in Africa. But in countries like PNG and other countries in our region in Southeast Asia, there's another common cause of malaria, which we call Vivax malaria. And this vaccine doesn't work against that form of malaria. So that's where there's some uncertainty about, you know, would this vaccine be, you know, how helpful would this vaccine be in countries in our region? Well, look, at least it will, you know, provide some protection against one form of malaria. But I think it emphasises that there's still another part of the equation, another part of the puzzle that needs to be solved, and that is ultimately having a vaccine that protects against that second form of malaria, which is not as common, but it is still very important. Does it necessarily follow that this vaccine can then be replicated with this different variant? Yeah, no, it's not necessarily straightforward. I think that, you know, this vaccine does provide a really important starting point and demonstrates that the strategy can work. But there will be some nuances and it's not necessarily going to be a straight, you know, crossing over to the other form of malaria. There might be some other challenges that we have to overcome. And, and that's something that you know, many people around the world are working on, including us. And what sort of challenges are you, are you talking about? Well, the forms, um, you know, the, para, the, the malaria organism, the infectious agent that causes malaria, has these different variations. Now, these are, this is not like COVID, which appeared, you know, quite recently in the last couple of years. This is a, a, these are um, organisms, diseases that have been with us for thousands and thousands of years. So they have evolved these complexities in the way they cause infection in people and the way they avoid the immune response. And so they, those, the way that that happens differs between the two main strains of malaria. And so we're going to have to understand how the second form of malaria, um, you know, dodges the immune system and how best the immune system can fight that infection. We'll learn from what's been achieved with this vaccine, but there may be some specific, you know, refinements and, and different strategies that are needed. It does beg the question, though, James, when you think about it, as you talk about malaria having been present for so long and being such a killer, why has it taken so long for this kind of development when we've seen up to 10 COVID vaccines in less than a year? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a question that we, you know, is really important. Why has it taken, you know, around a year or two for a COVID vaccine and it's taken several decades for an effective malaria vaccine? One of, part of the problem is it's just a much more complex organism, a much more complex infection. The, the virus that causes COVID is a relatively simple organism. Malaria is a much more complex organism. There are hundreds of what we call proteins that are important um, in, the, in the fight with the immune system. Whereas with COVID, you know, the vaccines are really focused on you know, one main protein, we call it one, main, one primary part of the, 
the virus. But for malaria, there are lots of different points of attack. And it's a complex organism that, in a way, has a lot more resources to dodge the immune system and to, you know, avoid what we put up against it. So that, that's part of the reason. I think the other is, you know, the funding hasn't been optimal. We'd have to say that. You know, we could have been further along had there been greater investment. Yeah. And, you know, it is concerning when you see countries like the Pacific just with such low take-up of uh, the COVID vaccine, despite a dire um, wave playing out there. So you've also got that hesitancy, don't you? Yeah, look, I think with malaria, it's, it's quite a different situation because communities around the world are used to, you know, the problem of malaria. They're very conscious of how big a problem it is. It makes the, you know, children and adults, families, it has a big impact on their health, it causes death. They're very aware of the negative impacts of um, malaria. So I think that the uptake of the vaccine will be very high. Um, COVID, on the other hand, it's a recent thing, you know, and communities have a lot to learn about it. And I think that's why there's some hesitancy. They need more information. Malaria, they, they understand what it is. They know it's a big problem. And I think they'll be very positive about this development. You know, the vaccine's not a, a silver bullet, but it is an important part of the strategy for, for, you know, beating malaria down. Yeah, so really encouraging. Great. James, great to talk. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for your time.